All right, so a beautiful morning to everyone. Hello to all our YouTube viewers and participants. Welcome to Stack League University Series, Central Escolar University Edition. I am King, and I will be your host for this lovely morning. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that you, uh, if you have any question for today's session, you may put it in, your, in the comment section, and later on, we will discuss it during the Q&A session. Before we dive in into today's session, I would like to give you an overview of Stack League, especially if it's your first time. All right. So Stack League is the Philippines' largest programming league or programming competition. And our mission is to really develop programming leaders to inspire a nation in decoding. The tournament is powered by StackTrack's fully automated uh, talent analytics and assessment platform. Now in its second competitive year or competitive programming year, Stack League wouldn't be possible without our without the support of our partners. We're fortunate to be supported by the top companies in the industry. We have Silver Sponsor, Coding Chiefs, and Bronze Sponsors, Microsoft, Dell Tech Systems, Upper.ph, and Recruit Day uh, Incorporated. Our media partners, SparkUp, Apps Gadget, Was Up Filipinas, Corner Magazine PH, Androidist, uh, Megabytes, Backend News, Blue Wing, and Manila Republic. The same goes for our community partners who help the league reach as many programmers in the country as possible. Here they are. All right, so moving forward, this pioneering programming league was launched last March 16 of 2021, and it's uh, uh, now gathering over 9,000 tech talents across the country. And then we are trying to test their coding acuity, of course, with the promise of nationwide recognition, lots of prizes, thousands of tech job opportunities, and access to invitation-only events. So the league's year-round cash prize pool is now at 10 million in the duration of whole competition. All right. So one of the highlights in Stack League is a weekly stack, uh, stack race for both individual and team categories. So each week, the top 10 players um, will be announced. And the top three, uh, top three teams are announced all across Stack League's social media platform to recognize the players who stayed on top of ranking. Apart from this, we also have the Stack League uh, Featured Programmer Campaign, wherein the weekly top 10 players are going to be featured on Stack League's website and, our, and on our social media channels. Stack League will also be hosting numerous tech sessions and career sessions all throughout the year. Aside from this, there are also exclusive trainings available for ranking up to the next challenger levels, these events and trainings are all for free. All right, so moving forward, the Stack League Ambassador Program is a year-round initiative to reward Stack League challengers who go beyond the competition and inspire the nation into coding. To tell you more about the Stack League Ambassador Program, here is a short clip for you to see. All right, so congratulations to Dominic Lopez for being the Stack League ambassador for the month of February and winning the PH ad, the cash prize of 3,000 pesos and a Stack League t-shirt. If you want to be the next Stack League ambassador and win the cash prize and t-shirt, the program is now open for March. You can find the full mechanics at our website, beat.ly slash Stack League Ambassador 2022. Okay, so here are the supported programming languages at the league right now. We have JavaScript, Java, Python, C Sharp, and PHP. All right, so how does the ranking system work? So there are five ranking system. Um, this is how the ranking system works. After signing up, you will start at the bottom with zero points. And all you need to do is solve as many challenges as you can. And you will earn the uh, 
you will earn the corresponding points. So the more points that you earn, the higher your ranking goes. And once you have enough accumulated points, you can now get to the next level challenges where more opportunities are unlocked for you to access. There are three uh, challenger levels. We have the bronze, silver, and gold level. So uh, um, each time that you will level up from uh, every challenger level, you will earn prizes. For example, for the bronze, you will earn 100 pesos, silver 100, and for the gold, 300 for a total of 500 pesos. So individual category, we also have the stack league um, treasure chest individual category. It will um, it actually opened last February 22 and will end on March 26 of 2022. So the weekly top 10 players will each receive 500 cash prizes. All right, so moving forward for the team category, we also have the Stack League Treasure Chest for team category. So each winning team will receive 1,500 cash prize. This one was also launched last February 22 and will end on March 26 of 2022. All right, so you can also read the full mechanics of the Stack League Challenger level, um, Challenger level up, and treasure chest individuals and teams at that, uh, at our website, thestackleague.com slash blogs. And that's it for the overview of Stack League. So this uh, competition is a year-round competition. So don't, uh, don't worry, guys, if you're just starting to register right now so you can keep up uh, with the other, uh, no, other participants. All right, so let's not delay this any further. I know that you guys wanted to learn a lot from our guest speakers for today. So a little reminder for everyone, if you have any questions for our speakers, uh, kindly put it in the comment section and we will address them later on. All right, so let me introduce to you our first speaker. She is a graduate of De La Salle University, Das Marinas, with a bachelor degree in science psychology a licensed psychometrician, and currently working as admin recruitment and staff OJT coordinator at StackTrack Enterprise Incorporated. She handles, uh, she handles both recruitment and internship. Let's give, uh, let's give a warm welcome to Jesslaine Nicodemus. Good morning, Jess. Uh, I think you're on mute, Jess see me ah yeah yeah all right is my mic clear naman uh yes you're uh we can hear you naman. all right so let's start so i will be discussing today the it career opportunities and these are what we're going to discuss so the it career trends the tech internship benefits the career tips for success and what's next for you all right, so who is StockTrack? So StockTrack is a talent analytics company specialized in using algorithms and data to assess, analyze, and improve programmer capabilities. So these are our industry partners, and these are our school partners. So the StockTrack solutions offer three platforms, which are the StockTrack assessment platform, for uh, the assessment and hiring of developers, the stack and for IT educators, which is the learning management system or LMS, which is designed to teach IT classes. And the stack is the Philippines' largest gaming league. So for the IT career trend, so why tech? So IT industry is full of discovery and potential. And the company saw the importance of tech talents during the pandemic, resulting to a high demand for IT professionals. Jobs in IT are considered as one of the highest paying jobs, and it is a fast-paced career that leads to more opportunities for career growth. So what are the trends and developments in the Philippine software market? So there is an emergence of technology startup companies, software development towards gaming, adoption of virtualized environment, social media integration, greater cybersecurity focus, and cloud-based data. So for the IT career paths, uh, with regards to technology, we have back-end development, front-end development, database, testing, data, blockchain, DevOps, and infra or cloud. And for the business path naman, we have business development or sales, marketing, product management, 
product management, customer success, management, entrepreneurship, and invest, investing. And for the tech internship benefits naman, uh, it allows you to experience data analysis, software development, project and task management, research and reporting, problem solving, and communication. And with regards to mentorship, it will allow you to get, it will serve as a guide to achieve your goals, to challenge your, and to level up your skills and knowledge and pro, in preparation for professional environment. And for your personal development, it will help you to increase your confidence, improve communication skills, establish growth mindset, and for the career tips or advice for success, so how can you start your career in tech? So firstly, uh, you can apply for internship with reputable tech companies that would help you set your foundation and also support your personal development. This will also include explore your explore upskilling opportunities that are available for you even as students and grow your knowledge by leveraging on webinars and tech talks. This will also start growing your network. So what are the tips or advices for in order for you to be successful in this? So firstly, you need to identify your goals. You also have to create a professional resume, identify your strengths and weaknesses, ask for help or as I've mentioned, as I've mentioned mentorship. And it is also important to track your progress. So what's next for you? What are the possible opportunities for you? So, here at Stack League, we offer uh, we offer programming languages that will or courses that or challenges that will help you improve your skills while you are getting rewarded. And this will also help you to have access to tech trainings and certifications. And lastly, for tech job opportunities. So the Stack StackTrek offers free courses of different levels. And this and after completing these courses, this will also give you certification and will also help you to improve your programming skills. So for more questions, you can email us at this email addresses for recruitment team team that stacktech at gmail.com and for internship it's internship at gmail.com that would be all thank you so much for listening all right uh thank you so much just lane for sharing or for uh, for that very informative and insightful presentation and thank you for sharing your thoughts regarding the uh, the, uh, the possible career opportunities in the tech industry especially post pandemic so, all right so now we are opening the floor for q and a quest uh, for the q and a forum and if you have your questions regarding uh, our sp uh, first speaker for today you may type it in the comment section and we will browse through it and then ask it to just lane all right let's okay let me just let's see in the comment section <clears throat> all right so hmm Okay, so while waiting for other questions from our audience, let me just, ah, okay. There's a question from Kenneth Silo. Uh, is the internship online? Okay, so for the internship, it is fully online. So we have two internship programs, which are the talent, uh, talent, uh, talent development program for the tech side. And we also offer digital marketing Marketing development internship. So yeah. All right. So thank you so uh, thank you Jess for answering that question. Um, just to add, lang uh, yeah, we are actually a virtual internship program right now at Stack Trek. So okay. So are there any specific requirements for the internship? All right. For this for the requirements, it depends on what the what your school or university requires you. But for the requirements, siguro on our side, for the talent development program, we only require you to take the assessment. Then after that, uh, 
you can start right away with your internship. For the digital marketing development program naman, uh, we just need to screen your resume or your audio. You need to submit a five, uh, a one-minute audio or video record of yourself, introduction. So, yeah. <coughs> All right, so thank you so much, uh, Kenneth, for asking that question. So if you're interested to become part of the uh, uh, interns of Stack Trek, you may send your the resume earlier to the email that was shown on your screen, or you may um, visit our, um, well, you can send us an email at stacktrek uh, at gmail.com, info at stacktrek at gmail.com, and we will uh, address your question for the internship program. Okay. So um, let's see if we have another question from the comment section. Okay, so guys, don't uh, don't worry. You uh, you don't have to be shy with and asking questions. We are here to to share with you all of the knowledge that we are uh, all of the knowledge of the guest speaker that can be shared to you. So don't be shy to ask questions. Okay, so let me just browse. All of, all of the comments are actually for Anna, for um, what they call it, for introduction and where they came from. So there's a lot of students uh, here today. Okay, so I think we, we don't have a question right now for this one. Mm-hmm. What else? All right. So while waiting for a uh, for a question no, for, from our participants. All right. So we have a question from Mary Eugene Malonso. For internship, are you ex uh, accepting other course po? Yes. Hi. Uh, for the courses naman, as long as it's related to IT or digital marketing, we accept naman. All right. So, uh, okay. So for the uh, for the course, po, no? so uh, earlier just mentioned that we have two internship uh, program at Stack Trek. So we have the digital marketing uh, development program and the talent development program, wherein you really ha you're really uh, in line or you're really doing the field work uh, the the work of um yung everyday na uh, workload ng mga uh, tech talents natin. So if you're into technology or into pro programming, you would be able to in be interested in the talent development program and be able to work with our uh, tech talents. So every day you will learn a lot of things and you will be parang mahasa ka when you when you go into the ano talaga, your career path or designated career path. So yun. Okay. Do we have any questions pa from the comments? So Okay, guys, keep it coming. All of their questions, we will answer it. Uh, we will answer it right now. So, okay, just um, just a uh, while waiting, no. So, I just wanted to ask Jess Lane regarding her thoughts. So, um, since tech uh, tech is really uh, parang one of the in demand work of right now uh, of today, what would be your best um advice? to all of the uh, parang graduating students. So a lot of them are really thinking na parang, ah, we're parang uh, fresh graduate lang pa lang kami. So how are we going to land a job easily? Or what are the tips that we, we need to consider when we're looking for a job in the tech industry? Mm -mm. For that naman, as, I meant, as I've mentioned earlier, it is important na you build your resume. Kasi some candidates, or some applicants build their resume pero they do they do not include their skills what are the what are the courses that they have learned katulad kunwari ng different courses like html java or anything like that tapos it is also important that that they know their strengths and weaknesses yun nga kasi you be parang mas madali na mag deal ka muna sa strengths mo and then improve your weaknesses along the way so, yun. 
All right. Thank you, Jess, for sharing uh, for sharing your thoughts regarding how are, uh, how is it going to be helpful for the uh, graduating students or mga fresh graduates natin. So that's really true, no? You really have to build your uh, your resume first, and don't forget to add in your skills, your important skills. For example, you're looking, uh, you're applying for a um, as a tech talent, and there are specific skills that they are looking for. So the, uh, don't forget to mention or to put it in your resume all of the important skills needed for that uh, for that for that um for that job post. But just remember that when you uh, when you put skills in your resume, just make sure that you you really are. Parang, uh, you you can prove it to them when they when they made make you test your skills for that matter but anyway that would be um that would be a, a great tip coming from just lane on how will you be able to improve your success uh, success rate in finding or landing a job or career in the tech industry all right i think that would be uh, all for the q a session so thank you so much to everyone for asking or for your questions and thank you for just lane for answering our participants questions and my questions also and of course that um for that very insightful presentation and now to welcome you our second speaker uh he is an experienced um he uh, uh, he is an experienced teacher of eight years of teaching um, in STEAM robotics, education, and computer programming, focusing on programming, focusing on, uh, focusing on Arduino and microbit microcontrollers, VEX robotics, and Lego education, um, Python scratch and game design using Roblox, and now a certif uh, certified AWS cloud practitioner. Let's give a warm welcome to Morris C. Bana. Hello. Good morning, everyone. So thank you so much for that introduction. So again, my name is Morris Bana. I am a licensed professional teacher, and I will be discussing cloud technology and how to study the cloud. So let's start. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, a uh, brief background about myself. Uh, I've been teaching. I've been in the academe for almost a little over eight years. So I am a certified uh, STEM robotics educator. So yun nag-start ako talaga into teaching. I am teaching uh, STEM robotics. And I'm, I'm an Arduino enthusiast. So me and my students created uh, projects and prototypes uh, using Arduino. And also I am a bronze badger of uh, a content streamer for Kumu. Okay, so before we get started with our discussion about cloud technology and how to study the cloud, may I ask, what is cloud? Okay, so do you have any idea or prior knowledge, ano ba talaga ang cloud? When we talk about cloud, what do we mean by cloud? Anyone from, from our viewers, you can type your, your answer in our comment section. So any idea lang about ano ba talaga ang cloud when we talk about cloud? Kasi by now I think most of us in in our kubaga in our in our generation uh laganap or this when we talk about cloud this is very evident to us. Kumbaga we encounter it uh uh i would say most of the time okay so from uh gervancho mark virtual space okay very good so that's that's one concept okay so it is a virtual space thank you so much how about the others ano sa tingin niyo yung cloud storing and accessing data over the internet virtually okay that's a good uh context then okay that's very good thank you so much kenneth okay so the others from andrea data storage without direct management from the user and from uh josan services and software running in the internet okay thank you so much for your inputs okay very good Okay, when we talk about cloud, we would say na para siyang virtual space. So that's good. 
uh, storage din siya kasi din, meron tayong mga services na ginagamit, mga cloud storage tayong ginagamit, okay? That we could upload our files, store our data. But when we talk about the definition of cloud, cloud is actually the delivery of different services. So it can be uh, uploading materials to the cloud or it can be used to your business. Okay, so cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of compute power, database, storage, application, and other IT resources via internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. Well, the pay-as-you-go pricing will, would be kumbaga, on, on the side of Amazon, AWS, we cater pay-as-you-go pricing. Okay, so cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of compute power. So if you want to have a virtual, uh, virtual computer, virtual machine that would do your computing, <clears throat> So you can have that. Uh, we have database as well. So you can upload many files uh, and then process it and then storage. And then most of the application runs on cloud as well. So lahat ng mga IT resources natin uses cloud. And we acquired all of those services via the internet. So how does it work? How does cloud work? So these resources run on servers. So in the traditional uh, IT, we have our, kumbaga, let's, let's put it this way. You're in a school and your school has a lot of, of data, your mga information, your, your grades, uh, your, your records, uh, all of those are stored in a server. So the servers, are basically computers located in your school. And then, na-access ng mga, ng mga admins natin yun, uh, ng mga teachers natin yun locally. So, it works the same. So, these resources run on servers, computers that are located in large data centers. Now, in AWS, AWS has a lot of, of data centers. And what we do is we let people use it. Okay, we let people use that service. Unlike the traditional na as you keep on improving your business, acquiring more data, you would need to acquire more server, which is very, kumbaga, uh, it's not, it's not uh, uh, very cost-effective. Okay, because as you grow your business, as you accumulate more data, you need a lot of servers, you need a lot of compute power, you need a storage to be able to accommodate that. And you would need to invest and you need to manage and you need to maintain. So with AWS, that service is already in the AWS side. We will manage the, the infrastructure, your mga databases, the physical databases. We will manage the, the uh, networking, lahat-lahat. Kumbaga, AWS will let you use the service. Gagamitin mo lang. And what you needed to do is just to uh, maintain and you yourself will uh, uh, will have to secure your own data. Okay? When we talk about using the services of AWS, we have what we call the AWS shared responsibility. So AWS will have some responsibility and you as a customer will also have responsibility. Now, these resources can be used together like building blocks to build solutions that help business goals and to satisfy your technology requirements. So just like what I mentioned, as we see here on the slide, on the left side, ito yung tinatawag natin traditional. Okay? Ito yung traditional infrastructure. Okay, and on the right side, ito yung mga services na meron siya equivalent in AWS. So for example, you needed firewalls, uh, ACLs, administration. Meron din si, uh, si AWS niya na security group. We have network ACLs and we have administrator service such as AWS IM. In networking, you have to have your router, network pipeline, you have your switch. In AWS, meron rin siyang corresponding equivalent such as ELB, 
uh, elastic load balancer, and we have the Amazon BPC or the uh, virtual private cloud. On servers, of course, in the traditional, you have the on-premise servers. Ito yung mga uh, malalaking para mga computer, the rack and stack. So, ikaw lahat magmamanage nyon. Uh, the cooling system, of course, the labor, uh, ikaw din magpapasahod ng mga, uh, kumbaga, mga magbimaintain ng mga physical servers mo. The renting of space, because when you have a larger business, uh, it takes so much space kung marami kang server. Of course, you needed uh, a room for that or even rent an office for that. In AWS, the servers, ang equivalent niya, marami. Okay, we have M AMI, we have uh, Amazon e EC2 instances, marami. Okay, when we talk about storage and database naman, you have the DAS, SANS, NAS, and in AWS, meron kami EBS, EFS, uh, S3, and we have RDS. Basically, we have, quote-unquote, unlimited storage. So you don't have to worry uh, on on uh, estimating kung ilan ba yung storage na kailangan ninyo. Okay? So, yeah. So what's the hype with the cloud? Basically, two things. One is big data. When we talk about big data, okay, these are uh, data that we acquire. Okay? Right now, as we evolve, and as our business evolve, we acquire so much data. And just like what I mentioned a while ago, as your business grow, and as the industry go, as you as acquire more data, you needed uh, physical capacity to that. You needed to you needed to have larger servers with storage, malalaking storage, which is again binibili yon, and it takes time for it to be delivered. Okay. Kasi hindi lang naman yan, kumbaga, hindi lang niya naman like maglalazada ka lang or mag-shopee na order mo and then you just have to wait. Uh, there are uh, processes and, and measures in acquiring servers, kumbaga. And it takes too much time. So if you wanted to start uh, a business that requires you to uh, provide services over the internet, medyo matatagalan ka. For example, you wanted to open, you wanted to have a startup na e-commerce. So gusto mo kalabanin kunyari si Shopee at si Lazada. Of course, you needed to have a server to uh, acquire all of the data and store the data of your customers, uh, of your, of your, uh, yung mga binibenta ng mga, ng mga sellers. Of course, you needed a uh, space for that one. Okay, so it takes too much data and as I mentioned, medyo hindi siya cost friendly. Kasi kailangan mo mag-acquire ng maraming maraming virtual server. Okay, so that's one. So using big data for competitive advantage and processing of the information, mahalaga ngayon ang big data. So you needed to have a, a, a service or a, a, an infrastructure that can accommodate uh, those large big data. Second reason is the fourth industrial revolution. So, we all know that our industry evolved from time to time, centuries by centuries. Just to have a, a background, the first industrial revolution is with the use of, of, of steam engines. Second industrial revolution, the use of uh, uh, electricity, uh, the use of, of uh, oils, yun yung mga nagpaprovide ng power sa atin. Okay, the third industrial revolution is doon na introduce yung computer. Okay, doon na introduce yung computer and on the fourth industrial revolution, eto na, uh, we use the internet for interconnectivity. So we use internet for automation and one of the features of the industrial revolution is yung cloud. Okay? So many businesses uh, according to research, so a total of uh 90% mostly uh of the businesses right now uh part of their service or part of their processes includes cloud so what more as we transition uh to this industrial revolution maybe someday lahat na ng mga services natin is included si cloud so 
cloud is very i would say vital for for businesses right now in order for them to be competitive and with the knowledge of cloud having the knowledge of cloud uh us will be also be competitive in the market okay so we have what we call the benefit of the cloud aws benefit of the cloud this is compared to the traditional uh, traditional IT. So, for example, number one, trade capital expense for variable expense. When we say capital expense, ito yung ini-invest na nga natin. Yung mga, yung servers, yung pagpapasahod mo sa mga tao mag-maintain ng mga services, I mean, nung, nung mga infrastructure mo. Also, uh, the power, the cooling system, lahat-lahat yun, yun, yung capital expense mo. You will trade that for variable expense. When you transition to cloud, especially AWS, we will handle all of those uh, uh, kumbaga, heavy lifting ng ating infrastructure. Since kay AWS yung database, AWS will maintain it. Okay? Since kay AWS yung, yung uh, uh, data centers, kami nang bahala dun sa uh, storage and, and on the location itself. So what you just need is to pay for the services that you will use. Kaya nga si AWS is pay as you go pricing. If you use the service for a specific duration, you are billed either per hour, per second of use of that service, and then you stop it, yun lang ibibil sa sa'yo. No need for commitment. Okay? So again, pay as you go pricing ang um, principal ni AWS. So that's one of the benefits trade capital expense for variable expense. Second is benefit from massive economies of sales. Uh, as we all know, Amazon Web Services is a large company. And up until, up until now, we are still growing. And as we grow, okay, as we grow, medyo mumababa yung pricing natin because we accumulate more and more customers. Okay? And ang nagbe-benefit nun, hindi lang sa AWS, kundi yung mga uh, gumagamit ng service as more users in the economy uses the service mas malaki yung chance na magiging lower yung prices and I, I would say that uh, using or or with the exposure with AWS and other cloud services I would say that AWS uh, is much more cheaper than the other uh, cloud services Second, uh, I mean, third is stop guessing capacity. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. If you acquire, acquire more data, more processing of data, you would think, ilan yung storage na kailangan ko? Would I need, just for example, ha, just for context, for example, sa phone, would I need a 32 uh, gig phone? Or would I need, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a 128 gig phone? So, at least, you won't, have to guess because with AWS, you are uh, you can scale up or scale down your capacity depending on on how you run your business. Okay, if you want larger storage, say get push go. If you want uh, a lower storage, okay lang. Meron din kami ganyan. Okay, mas flexible siya. Okay, so you just have uh, with with one of the benefit of AWS you will have to stop guessing ilan ba yung capacity na kailangan mo. Okay? So, for example, ang kinuha mong capacity, for example lang ha, just for context, for example, 100 gigabytes lang, eh nag-exceed ka doon. Okay? Ibibil ka lang nung, uh, you will just get, uh, uh, you will just be billed per, per gigabyte na ma-accumulate mo uh, on top of the current price range that you have. So, kumbaga, uh, maging flexible siya. For example, uh, 100 gig lang yung mo, pero lumagpas ka doon, hindi ka na pwedeng mag-acquire ng another, kumbaga, mag-entertain ng other uh, storage. Uh, ganun kasi sa, for example, your your Google Drive. Pag na-reach mo na yung max mo for the capacity, di ba, hindi ka na pwede talaga magdagdag. Okay. Baka pagdagdag ka lang kapag nag-purchase ka ng another uh, another uh, storage nila. With AWS, very flexible. Okay? And we have different services and tools that you can use to monitor your storage capacity. 
Okay? Also, increase speed and agility. Okay? Uh, in AWS, we have a lot of what we call the AWS regions, AWS, uh, AWS edge locations uh, all, over the, all, all over the world. So, with that, must ease yung pag-transfer ng data. Okay? Uh, we would ensure that there's no latency. Uh, fifth is stop spending money on running and maintaining data centers. So, as I mentioned, uh, in traditional, you would have to maintain everything, uh, running those infrastructure with AWS kami ng bahala doon. So, you, ha you, have, uh, you would save cost. Okay, and then lastly is go global in minutes. As I mentioned, AWS is one of the uh, kumbaga, world renowned service. So if you want your business to go global, mas mabilis yung access. Because again, in AWS, we have what we call AWS regions, AWS edge locations. Yun, marami tayong kumbaga, avenue to make our business. Uh, cater to global uh, customers or clients. So next question is, how to study cloud? How to be a, what we call a cloud practitioner? So uh, as mentioned intro uh, sa introduction kanina, I am a certified cloud uh, practitioner. Uh, I just recently got my certification. And all I needed to do is to study. And uh, I would say, that with with the uh, with the uh, uh of course the technology that we have and with the uh with the setup that we have it is easier to uh study it by attending a lot of boot camps or uh enrolling yourselves in different self paced courses so AWS uh has uh, a training boot camp called AWS Cloud Practitioner Training Bootcamp. So this is to learn uh, cloud foundations, AWS services, and uh, to certify as well. Of course, we would need certification for us to, you know, uh, uh, to formally call ourselves cloud practitioner and to test our knowledge with the use of, of cloud services. So we also have uh, in education.ph uh, those boot camps. So if you are interested in those boot camps, I would suggest to uh, follow the socials of education.ph or you can go to the website of go.education.ph slash AWS Restart. This is for all uh, tech enthusiasts who wants to push or who wants to upskill themselves. Also, this is for uh, uh, career shifters. Uh, just like me, I'm, I'm mostly on education, but now I am a cloud practitioner. Okay, we also have self-paced uh, courses. So all you need to go uh, to do is to go to AWS Skill Builder and AWS Educate. So we have here courses. Of course, some of the courses are paid, but most of the courses here are free. And it's enough for you to learn the cloud foundations. So we have, uh, I think, under the Skill Builder, it's a 16-hour course. Okay. Uh, in Educate, there are a lot of, uh, AWS Educate, there are a lot of courses that relates to the use of cloud. We have cloud introduction. If you're into IoT, meron din doon, machine learning. Okay, meron din doon. Okay, so we have a lot of, of avenue for us to learn how to be a cloud practitioner. When it comes to the certification, doon na lang magkakaroon ng payment. Okay. So you would have to be certified with AWS and all you need to do if you want to learn more is go to their website. Also, uh, go to our socials, uh, education.ph. So in Facebook, in, in Instagram, and other socials. So that's all for my talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in our comment section. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Morris, for sharing that very detailed and very concise presentation. And thank you for sharing your experience and expertise in cloud technology. And I hope these people or this other, uh, our participants for today learned a lot and will be uh, would be able to apply it to their respective careers. And now we are opening the floor for questions from our participants on the YouTube uh, YouTube viewers. All right. So. Let's browse into the comment section if they have questions for Morris regarding the cloud technology. All right, so let's wait for them to flood in. Medyo... Okay, so while waiting for the questions not to other participants, let me just view here. Again, everyone, if you have questions no, about our, uh, about the cloud technology presented by Morris for today, uh, feel free to put in the uh, Feel free to put it in the comment section, and we will address it. Uh, address it now. Okay, so while waiting for our um, for our participants to ask a question regard, uh, regarding the cloud technology, I would like to ask Lang Morris now, uh, there, is there a specific difference between the hybrid cloud and hybrid IT? Uh, yes. When we say hybrid, uh, we have different kumbaga, implementation. We have, the on, we have what we call the on-premise, we have the private cloud, and we have the hybrid. When we talk about the hybrid, it is a combination of uh, implementing your, your your business with the on-premise approach. So for example, you still have your uh, data centers, meron ka pa rin data centers, but on the computing part, uh, you are using uh, cloud services such as what we have what we call the uh, AWS uh, or Amazon EC2. That's actually uh, a virtual uh, a virtual computer or virtual machine that can do a lot of processes. So for example, you wanted to uh, focus your your application in 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 games, or if you wanted to have uh, uh, an application that focuses on on storage, then EC2 can can do that. All right. So thank you for that insight uh, regarding the hybrid uh, hybrid cloud. So for those who are especially for some schools, so if they have parang, parang mga servers, public servers for their for the information of their students, they can use hybrid uh, hybrid cloud if they want mm. naman na to have two different ano, if they can't leave yung mm. yung old nila na, na server or data service. Yes. Okay, so let me just go ahead again with the comment section if they have questions na regarding our uh, session for today. All right. So again, guys, don't uh, feel free to ask questions. No. All right. So we have a question from Kenneth Silo. What certifications or skills are important for to be a cloud per, uh, practitioner? Okay. So I would, uh, I would say this is from my personal uh, experience. So uh, just so you know, I am not a uh, an IT graduate. I'm actually a graduate of. Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in science, biology specifically. So when I transition to, when I teach, yung naging teacher ako, naging robotics, so naging medyo tech yung approach ko. And then when I transition to be a cloud practitioner, actually you won't need specific skill set. All you needed to, uh, I would say, all you needed to have is the enthusiasm to study and to be a cloud practitioner. Because along the way, 
as I as I study as I studied uh, the courses and as I exposed myself in the laboratories on 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 the cloud practitioner, uh, nagagamay naman siya. Uh, especially you guys, you're in the IT uh, industry or I, you're you're taking an IT path. Uh, alam nyo na agad yung mga network services, yung mga ganun. Ako, medyo kasi ako, inaral ko pa yan eh. So, yung mga protocols, medyo, for me, nung, nung nakita ko yan, medyo sabi ko, oh, okay, so I needed to study this part in order to understand some specific dun sa discussion. But, when it comes to, you know, specific skill set, I would say uh, enthusiasm and the understanding in, in computer technology. That's one of the thing. Uh, may programming then, especially I would just share na merong yung pag-generate ng pag-create ng mga policy. Kumbaga, policy. It's in the JSON format. Okay, so you just have to write uh, your policy in a JSON format. Uh, pero basic syntax lang because in, in Amazon naman, we have different services and options. If you want to generate or create your policy, uh, na hindi naka-json file, meron din siyang, uh, kumbaga, uh, dashboard type na you just have to click, click, click on something and the dashboard uh, the dashboard will just have to generate uh, uh, a JSON translation to that one. All right. Thank All right. you for sharing. Uh, thank you for sharing about the no, no, important skill sets for being a, a cloud practitioner. First, you really have to be enthusiastic before mm -hmm. becoming a cloud practitioner. So it's really uh, a learning is uh, a never ending experience like an adventure yeah. for you to be a cloud practitioner. So don't yeah. worry if you if you think that you don't have a specific skill set. No, you you have to learn lang. Um, mm -hmm. some of the skills that you need to be a cloud practitioner. And for mm -hmm. certifications, it's along the way you can take a lot of certifications para naman din, uh, while you are uh, going to become a cloud practitioner, there are a lot of uh, ideas and parang uh, mm -hmm. knowledge that was input or parang na, nakuha mo along the way. So yes. I think, the, uh, thank you so much for, for sharing, Morris, no, on, um, na it's uh, not that really necessary that you have a specific skill set to become a cloud practitioner you just have to really be into it and be parang you're really enthusiastic to becoming a cloud practitioner all right so we have a question another question from her vasha mark angelo is aws free okay so uh, i mentioned a while ago meron tayong mga self-paced courses or uh, learning management system so we have what we call the aws skill build, uh, skill builder and aws uh, educate those uh, LMS or websites, you are free to learn the foundations and uh, especially dun sa AWS Educate, may cloud foundations na dun and they offer laboratory. Those uh, courses are free. What is not free is yung certification. So, yun yung may bayad yung uh, you want yourself to be certified. Of course, once you enroll your uh, enroll to a specific course naman, we want it to be uh, certified uh, on that specific course. But at least uh, we have that cred uh, credibility that we are, uh, that we learned uh, the Cloud Foundation or any course na, uh, na itake natin. So yung, yung certification lang yung may bayad. But the courses are, are free. So if you have time aside from aside from the enthusiasm no so you needed to invest your time as well in in studying so just like me yung before pa ako maging cloud practitioner nag-aaral pa i mean nag nag nagtatrabaho pa ako ng iba kumbaga i i invested my time to study uh cloud foundation cloud solutions uh to be able to be first in it all right, thank you, uh, thank you, Maurice, now for that uh, insight. So that's really true, no. So aside from it, uh, becoming enthusiastic, you really have to a lot, uh, parang time management then and how you're going to take uh, some certification program or some courses, because it would really take time, naman then. So hindi naman siya yung parang overnight. 
I'm mm. done with it. And also, no, yung for the uh, for the certification, parang I, I really can compare it with the, some of the Harvard na online classes, where mm. the free naman yung mga courses, pero yung certification din talaga, uh, kailangan mo siyang bayaran. So those are the things that you uh, you need to consider la when you want to be certified and be uh, to have the credentials mm. of uh, some uh, some training. So uh, okay, another question from uh, Miss Jusanta Mayo. Or AWS training and certification purely online? Okay, that's a good question. So with the setup that we have right now in the Philippines, uh, online siya. Uh, the boot camps, the, especially in, in education, uh, it's, it's online. We have uh, a Zoom session every now and then for those who, uh, who are enrolled to the boot camp and to the to the restart course ni AWS online siya. Yung certification uh, may option siya for you to take it online and you have the option to take it sa mga testing centers here in the Philippines. Uh, when I took my certification, I took it online. Uh, medyo, medyo, ano lang, medyo tasky because just to share what happened or what will happen when you take the certification online, uh, you have to uh, schedule your exam Second is uh, you need uh, may the download ka kasi na, na software for you to test your PC if it's okay for 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 the online exam. Ito check niya kung meron ka mga uh, mga screen sharing something like your Dropbox or yung mga yung mga screen sharing apps. Kasi yung meron ako nung dati dito sa laptop eh, so pina remove. Uh, at the same time, when you took the exam, you needed to have a stable internet. Kasi once na nag-fail yung internet mo, recorded yung kung saan ka nag-stop na mag-exam or kung ano lang yung nasagutan mo, yun lang record And ayaw naman natin sayangin yung nagasus natin para do sa exam. So in stable internet, uh, you needed to have a webcam because uh, there's an online uh, proctor. So ang gagawin ng before ka mag-exam, we have what we call the online check-in. So ipapakita mo yung front view mo, left view mo, right view mo, back view, at saka yung sa ilalim. Kasi kailangan ma-check ma- nila na walang notes, walang anything that you can use to, to, let's say, cheat on the exam. So, while you're taking the online exam, you are not allowed as well to talk kasi baka, for me lang, ang pagkakaintindi ko doon, ba- bakit bawal ka magsalita is baka meron ka kasama na nandun, and then you're just reading the, the question, and then the, the other person will sign the answer. So, bawal din mag-talk during the exam. It's just that focus ka lang dun sa exam and then once you finish the certification, ayun, malalaman mo na either you pass or fail but uh, it's up for review. You just have to wait for the email kasi i-review pala yung video recording ng exam eh. Kung wala na violate. Uh, kung hindi ka naman nag-violate dun sa uh, process ng pag-exam, then you just have to wait uh, two to three business days to receive your certificate and your badge which you can use uh on your on your application or on your job so okay so para din talaga siyang ano no para kang nagtake ng ano board exam ng, yes. uh, ng mga uh, being an attorney so medyo strict din talaga especially for online ano online setup no so mm-hmm. very ano siya very very work extensive or may, may mga bagay ka na kailangan is sacrifice but definitely yung fru- uh, yung yung result naman yan would be ano would be beautiful no so you would have credentials for that ano certification so ano lang aside from enthusiasm your time syempre you have to ano lang din parang uh, sacrifice some other things before you get certified but but anyway the the good thing is you will get certified and mm-hmm. you will be using it for all of the ano parang all of the the career path that you're go uh, that you're going to go through so okay, mm-hmm. thank you so much, Miss Josan, for your question, and I, I really hope that uh, your question was answered. And uh, regarding the purely online, we have they have naman daw the testing center. If you want to, parang stay away from all of the uh, parang work extensiveness of online Hello. setup, you can you can go to the testing centers mm-hmm. to take the exam. Um, but anyway. Parang same, same naman, same result lang naman din. Uh, your goal is to really get certified for a specific yeah. skill set. And yeah. I think, um, okay, so do we have any questions pa from our audience? Let me just check.
Okay. All right. So I think that would be the last question for our uh, for our session for today. And thank you so much again, Morris, for sharing your your valuable knowledge regarding cloud technology and for answering the uh, the questions from our audience for today. And I really hope that you guys really learned a lot from uh, Morris uh, regarding the cloud technology and really hope that we'd be able to apply it. And uh, regarding the AWS certification, I hope that you guys would be interested in taking that certification program and be um, using it into the next few future or to the near future when you graduate. Okay, All right. So, so thank, you. thank you so much, Maurice. All right. So moving forward, um, some announcements before we end our session for today. So here are the upcoming Stack League events for the month of March. So we have the uh, Stack League uh, the, uh, PWA Filipinas Learning Web Development Top Down, which is happening on March 16, Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we have the Stack League uh, Byte or BYTE Admu Tech Session, building a minimum viable product on March 23, Wednesday at 6 p.m. also. And we also have one on March 24. Um, Stack League Microsoft Tech Session, again, uh, Cloud 101 on March 24, Thursday at 6 p.m. So uh, this could be a continuation of what you have learned for today. And we have the Stack League Draper Startup House, Future Economy in the uh, Metaverse and Why It Matters in the Philippines on March 30, Wednesday at 6 p.m. And there are plenty of opportunities for you to learn here in Stack League. Go to fb.com slash stack league slash events for the registration and details and get the latest updates. Okay, so moving forward, we have again the Stack League Ambassador for March is now open and accepting uh, entries. Earn your ambassador points now. Visit bit.ly slash Stack League Ambassador 2022. Also, make sure to earn league points to unlock um, the challenger levels and receive the prizes. So that's all for our announcements for this March. All right. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining the Stack League University Series, Centro Escolar University Edition. If you don't have a Stack League, um, if you don't have a Stack League account yet, make sure to sign up now at StackLeague.com, and of course, invite your friends and your family, your colleagues, who you think should be a part of the league. So see you guys at the next Stack League event. Goodbye, everyone, and have a uh, have a great morning.